Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another edition of Clean Pin here. I hope everything is going well for you guys. And uh, what we do here, obviously, is we talk about wrestling. You know, wrestling news from the past week. Uh, so, you know, obviously, as you can tell, this is done. It's not done professionally. This is just uh, on my coming home. The lighting is horrible. It's shitty. I know. But just this is just me to just pass some time. Look forward to, um, you know, I have everything set up to do live streams. So live streaming is kind of the new wave uh, of things. And I want to do uh, live streaming. And, you know, hopefully we'll get there very soon. So look out for that. You know, if you're a wrestling fan, uh, I do wrestling videos throughout the week sometimes here. Uh, subscribe, please, if you can. And uh, if you like sports in general, I also do uh, sports on this channel. Uh, so I cover everything, but this podcast uh, has to do with uh, wrestling. Vidcast um, covers, um, you know, WWE, ROH, AEW, you know, and, and news and rumors, things that I didn't get to throughout the week. So, you know, a, a lot of news, uh, a lot of news uh this past week, I'm trying to uh, I'm gonna try to get everything done in like one episode, and we usually do it about 40 minutes. If not, uh, I might try to maybe break it up, go a little bit longer. We'll, we'll see. Obviously, do this upload. Uh, but there are many things to uh, to talk about. Um, you know, one of the things I guess that I would want to start with is there's a, a rumor, a speculation going around. Um, that, that supposedly um, Christian uh, would be coming out of uh, retirement uh, you know, and get involved in this whole uh, Edge, uh, you know, Randy Orton uh, storyline that's developing. And, you know... I I I I, <coughs> I said it uh, before, um, you know, w- w- when when the news about Christian initially started uh, coming out, um, that you know, like Christian, for example, he had so much, he accomplished so much that really, what else did he have to? Uh, you know, what else did he have to really accomplish? There was not much. He'd done everything. Well, you know, uh, a thing that always plays into, I believe I mentioned it on my uh, video, a thing that always plays into certain things is uh, sometimes you, you do not, uh, you do not have the chance to um, go out on your own terms. And, you know, when Edge came back, you know, what he said on Raw the following week after the Royal Rumble is that he didn't get to go out on his own terms. He wants to go out on his own terms. By the way, that was one of the biggest kept secrets. <laughs> I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, but when you look at, uh, look at it... He, uh, they ended their podcast in January, which was probably... Uh, no, it was not in January. It was before then, quite some time. A couple of months uh, before. I think it was like September, maybe. Something like that. I forget exactly when it ended, but... Um, maybe the reason he cited that he didn't have time. Maybe the reason why he didn't have time was... Because he would be um, training to make that in-ring return. But I mean, uh, you know, on to the subject matter. Um, you know, now I, I guess I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if Christian uh, were to come back. You know, Christian, if you remember, he had those good matches. And you might argue that um, that Christian and Randy Orton, or though Christian would Never, Christian always kind of would get a, get the short end of the stick in that feud, but those were one of the better matches between 
uh, in Christian's career against uh, Randy Orton, I, I might argue, later on, you know, and that was at the later end of his um, career. You know, Christian really never had the chance to, to say, I'm retiring. He never had that, uh, you know, that in-ring moment where he said, you know, I'm going to retire. I have to retire. Thank you for everything. Uh, it was just kind of, he was on TV one week and then uh, no longer on TV and he kind of disappeared. So if I'm using the same argument, you know, for uh, Christian and Randy, uh, for, for Christian to come back, he is with a guy that he had great chemistry with in Randy Orton. You know, him coming back uh, might might not, you know, if he does come back, might not have anything to do with the same length that Edge is back. It could be just for a, you know, short run, short program. He maybe has one last match against Randy Orton. And then is finally has that moment where he's able to say, you know, I'm going to retire. I'm retiring. Heck, you know, maybe, you know, or maybe he doesn't even have to have any physicality. Maybe he could, um, you know, be, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know. There, there are different possibilities. He doesn't necessarily have to wrestle to be involved in the storyline. Then again... Him, you know, the rumor of coming out of retirement, I guess, to they're referring to as wrestling. Um, you know, I, I could, with the way things are, I could uh, definitely see it now. Um, and him wanting to go out his own way, uh, you know, there is a, a gap there that you have to fill. Uh, you know, kind of milk it. Uh, with Edge not being on TV right now. You know, so Edge, you know, Christian, Randy Orton, that trio, uh, it's, it would be able to, uh, you know, create some great chemistry. You can't argue right now, if you're looking at it going into WrestleMania season, uh, this is like the storyline that is the hot storyline. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Christian does come back. Just staying on this storyline, uh, when you look at Monday Night Raw, this guy, and just to give you an idea of how hot this angle is right now, how people are invested in this angle that quickly, Randy Orton, who's always been kind of like a, a, some people love him, other people hate him, but he's able to really just play that, uh, that, that, that thick, that douchebag character, uh, very well, and, uh, look, look what he did this past Monday Night Raw, got so much heat, didn't even have to say a word. And stood there for what? Ten minutes, it seemed like. Didn't have to say a word to express his actions. And just by not saying a word, you learned all that you need to know about Randy Orton. That's all you need to know. Well done. Well played by Randy Orton. Some more scuttlebutt. Uh, that was... You like that word, scuttlebutt, by the way? Scuttlebutt. Scuttlebutt. Some more scuttlebutt from the Royal Rumble fallout. And uh, just kind of... Um, Continuing it on uh, from last week's news, uh, Booker T 
uh, further uh, elaborated on the whole Matt Riddle uh, Brock Lesnar altercation backstage and Booker T uh, elaborated on his podcast if you recall and he said pretty much to the extent and I'm paraphrasing everything here um, I'm paraphrasing it where he said listen you know a lot of UFC guys do do this Riddle and Lesnar have both been in the UFC but but Booker T is saying listen um, this is not the UFC what he's doing what he's doing what Matt Riddle is doing He's saying it's going to business for himself. Going to business for himself. And, uh, you know, he's saying that you, you know, if you're going to do something like this on social media, you have to make sure that the other person knows exactly what you're doing and that you're going to do this. Because if not, then it's like you're going to business for yourself. You know, he's saying what's acceptable in UFC, it's not acceptable in the WWE. He's saying that uh, the whole drama that happened months before between, uh, or what people alleged was drama between Corey Graves and Booker T, both of them were in on it. And it was uh, like a me, uh, it was a social media stunt. To get some more clicks, get some more hits, get some more likes. And that's all that it was, get some more followers. But both knew what they were doing. Now, and and I know wrestling is a predetermined sport I get that I know that everything is predetermined here's my one thing okay and and there is uh, as you know uh, sure with everything you know maybe this is the generation that's different you know but you always hear about this uh this cold of um, this cold of respect, where you have to respect your elders uh, in the locker room, and I'm sure that's you know, and and that's really that's kind of this unwritten cold. Like you know, for the most part, wherever you get, you know, if you think about it, whether it be like your job, there's always seniority. So you think that everyone's on an equal scale. They're not. I mean, you're at the workplace. You can't compare yourself to another worker. Because a worker could be there less time than you. And they already have more perks than you. Maybe they're more liked. Uh, You know, maybe they're just seen in in uh, in a better perspective than you are. Maybe they are the go-getter, the golden child, the guy that always solves the problem, the go-to guy, and you're just, uh, you know, you've been there a long time, you're reliable, but are you good under pressure? So, I mean, there are instances where there are hierarchy, and not everyone's treated equal. So, Brock Lesnar is a different animal than Matt uh, Riddle. They're not equal. They're not. Brock Lesnar is a draw. Uh, whether uh, you like it or not, he is a draw. Uh, he brings uh, the company a lot of money. I could argue with you that people will 
tune in. If Brock Lesnar is advertised on a main of uh, on a Raw, on a pay per view, it's not you know. Yeah, you're gonna have more people talking. Let's just say about what Brock Lesnar did for that episode that he was on as opposed to any other person. He just draws attention on himself. So, again, I I pose this question to you. What exactly did Matt Riddle... Now, is he going to business for himself? Uh, that's so what, so what are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to grab that brass ring that everyone is talking about? That brass ring. How are you, you going to break that glass door? Glass ceiling. What's, what's the analogy? Is it glass ceiling? You have to get yourself noticed somehow, right? Am I right? I mean, or do you just become complacent and just be like, oh, well, whatever whatever they give me, eh, that's what they will give me. And that's it. You know, I, I, I don't... Uh, I don't have to worry about anything else. Whatever I get, I get. That's all. Eh, you know. Eh, if I'm not on TV uh, five weeks in a row, no big deal. I'll be on the next week, and then I'll be off another six weeks. Would uh, would an attitude like that get you anywhere in the company? They have a shitload of wrestlers between NXT, NXT UK, SmackDown, WWE. They have a ton of talent. I mean, you, you, you don't want to get lost in the shuffle, do you? You got to stand out. You got to... You know, you got to make sure Vince McMahon knows who you are. Now, listen, if you get Vince McMahon pissed off, then uh, that might be the wrong getting uh, to be known. That might be getting called out by the principal. Or that, might, that might be being on the principal's list. But again, and this is a long-winded uh, talk here, but again... I don't see Matt Riddle calling out, disrespecting Brock's family, Brock's children. He's just talking like a man talks, I guess, for lack of a better word. Nothing personal. So I don't see... He's not saying anything violent, so I don't see what the problem is. Does it really matter? Um, listen, if Vince sees social, I, I I would argue Vince sees and hears a buzz about a certain wrestler in a certain uh, um, you know situation. I think he would go for it. I don't think, I don't, you know, he does not really, he wouldn't really care if Brock Lesnar wants to do it or not. Fight against Matt Riddle. Brock Lesnar, you're on the contract. You'll do as I say. Again, I don't see what the big deal, just to stir, you know, things up a little bit here. Matt Riddle, uh, Matt Riddle just trying to up his stock a little bit and get himself noticed. And I don't see that being terribly wrong. 
Speaking of Brock Lesnar, seems to be the Brock Lesnar vidcast podcast so far on Clean Pin here. Speaking of Brock Lesnar, there is a, actually, um, our truth said this, our truth, our truth uh, said this, that he is, uh, that, not he is, that Brock Lesnar uh, it has been pitching certain things to him uh, and, you know, like to creative uh, about wanting to work with him more. You remember that uh, that segment on Raw from a couple weeks ago before the Royal Rumble um, you know where Brock Lesnar and now comes uh, R-Truth saying he's declaring for the Royal Rumble thinking that uh, Paul Heyman is in the Royal Rumble when he's not he says it's Brock Lesnar at that point R-Truth goes and to say well I'm fi- I'm officially undeclaring myself from uh, the Royal Rumble uh, it was it was hysterical and you see uh, you know, Brock Lesnar you know great character uh, and it was chuckling he was having a great time with uh, Art Truth in that ring of Monday Night Raw that goes to show you uh, you know that when things are when you have a, a general idea of what's going to happen but you don't know everything line by line word by uh, word you have just a general outline and if the performers in the ring are able to go with it, um, you know, bounce off of each other, uh, it has potential to be phenomenal. Brock Lesnar, the beast, was chuckling, having a good time. Brock Lesnar was chuckling, uh, uh, chuckling too when he uh, he was. Carrying on his, uh, when he had his boombox there, the Money in the Bank briefcase. He was having a great time with that. So who would have, who like, who would have thought Brock Lesnar pitching ideas for creative? And that just goes to show you, man, our truth. Our truth. This guy, first of all, he's, uh, like, this guy doesn't age. He's he's been looking the same for the last, you know, 20 years. And and, and he's a versatile, uh, you know, he's a versatile team player. He's reliable. It seems like no matter what you give our truth, he's going to make chicken shit into chicken soup. How many times have you seen our truth on Raw where, you know, he is just given something and, and you look at it, me and you, the average Joe Schmo, might look at him and be like, this is horrible. How am I gonna make this 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 work? How? And you give it to our truth, and he touches it into gold numerous times. You have wrestlers legit crack up. I believe it was a couple of years ago, for example, uh, where it was like Kane uh, on the outside. I think he was corporate Kane, the commissioner, and I think it was. Um, Uh, where it was like Roman Reigns, uh, Kevin Owens, um, I think it was also like The Miz in there, and they were all gunning uh, for like uh, they were all trying to compete for the uh, for the championship, 
And then Truth comes out and he says, you know, I'm going to be in uh, the Royal Rumble. And they go, this is not the Royal Rumble. You're not even in the match. And he goes, oh, my bad. And then he leaves, just like these one-liners and the mannerisms, the way he delivers it is uh, unbelievable. I, I think I'm going to link uh, link the video what I was describing here on the bottom where our truth you know, because I'm not doing it justice. There's also, in the, uh, there was interaction with our truth and um, Steve Austin and Vince McMahon where our truth is trying to succeed. <laughs> He's trying to succeed. He's trying to leave. And, uh, I think he was trying to uh, succeed uh, from the WWF or something along those lines. And he was dressed up as an uh, as a soldier, and that interaction between Vince McMahon and Steve Austin was hysterical. You know, how can you forget about little Jimmy as well? So, and this is just countless times where this guy, and, and you know, what he did with the 24 7 Heart Championship is phenomenal. So, he's a guy that I think. Um, I think uh, should be in the Hall of Fame because uh, he's just so versatile and he's able to do a lot of different things, a lot of different things, and he adjusts and you know he, he he's got that he's got that down. Uh, you know, a wrestler that that was like that to me that kind of reminded me of the the same thing. Um. You know, was a guy like Damian Sandow. You know, you look at the, some of the sketches that he was in. You know, from from being the intellectual savior that was his character. It was phenomenal. It was great. And then, you know, that kind of awards course, or not to me anyway, the, to the WWF, WWE awards course. And then they had him in, you know, being Johnny Crockett. What is it, Johnny Crockett or Johnny Denver? Johnny Crockett. Those sketches were hilarious. Then, you know, he, he, he does the whole Mizdow thing. Hilarious. You know, so, you know, he's he's just another one of those guys and that I think that, you know, WWE made a huge mistake with just letting him go. But the, that was like another guy to me that, you know, maybe, you know, they were just trying to give him any old thing just to, you know, be like, oh, here you go, kind of like a throwaway segment, and he was able to make it into gold. And, you know, I will argue even with you, like, some of the most entertaining entertain, entertaining segments are, you know, involve our truth in them. They're hysterical. So good for our truth Got to get some more TV time, more exposure, and uh, you might see him uh, working with uh, the Beast, Brock Lesnar down the line. Speaking of um, Booker T, as we backtrack again, there was a lot of um, a lot of uh, wrestling news uh, with. Um, you know, this past week, uh, but Booker T, you know, uh, it, well, let's backtrack this. The backstory behind this is the revival kind of, it, it, it seems to be this annual once a year thing for the revival where uh, this year, uh, once again, come January, Oh, they're always got their contract is uh, not that much longer. I believe it's until spring. I want to say late spring. Uh, one of the guys have has a little bit longer of a time frame because their contract was frozen due to injury. But uh, it's that annual, you know, once a year thing where you know the revival have um, asked once again for um, their release from the WWE. Didn't receive it last time. As of this podcast, doesn't seem like they've got the release again this year. 
Uh, it seems, you know, they, they have gotten offers uh, from the WWE. That's been speculated. And, uh, you know, uh, Booker T kind of weighed in on the whole thing. And, you know, he, he said... And, and it, the rumor is, is that what the Revival has been being offered uh, was um, a, a pretty nice penny. And, you know, Booker T said it... He said it, listen, just why don't you, why don't you guys sign? Take that money, nest it away for the future. You get to travel the world to all these places where other companies will not, you won't have the opportunity like that with other companies like you do with the WWE. Uh, you, you travel the world. You have the machine behind you. So he was kind of like perplexed as to why, you know, the Revival don't, don't resign. And with, with the Revival, um, uh, listen, I, I just don't... There were, the, the tag team is talented, don't get me wrong. And uh, I, I, first of all, I think they don't want to resign. And I don't think they're going to resign. I don't think they're using uh, they're, they're putting this uh, on hold and hold just to try to milk as much money as they could. I think that they uh, really just want to go out there and uh, spread their wings, so to see, uh, so to speak, see what else is out there. You know, with the revival to me, listen. Um, what they were, the revival is not for everyone, right? So the revival, they were great in uh, NXT. Uh, they were, and that's a different type of audience that watches NXT. Not everyone that watches NXT, not everyone that watches Raw and SmackDown watch NXT. So it's a different audience, right? And not for nothing, uh, Revival had their opportunities, had their chances. They've been on TV quite some time. And a majority of the time, the reaction for the Revival has been meh at best. Indifference. They've been given, you know, title... Uh, Opportunities had the straps. Still, the reaction is mech indifference. So, here's the thing, you know, and, and that style is more like of an old school style. If you go to AEW. That style, uh, it's really no tag team like them there. You know, Lucha Brothers and Young Bucks and all these tag teams. Uh, you know, House uh, uh, Best Fr Lucha. You know, uh, Best Friends. Uh, it's all flipperly flops, flop, flop, flop. Like the you know. Revival says no flops, no flips. So how is that style going to mesh? Well, maybe that's, you might argue, that's exactly what AEW needs in a tag team division. Uh, I just don't know. <coughs> a lot of wrestling can only get you so far is what I'm saying. And, and, and it's, and it has to do with personality I think in storylines now more than anything you've you've heard numerous wrestlers say that before so okay if you don't want to be behind the machine and you go to aew uh, first of all again like I said the style I don't think matches so your, your style will be all out of whack. You're you're the minority there. You're not the majority of how teams wrestle. So you're going to have to adjust, I guess. I don't know. I just don't see it with AEW. 
even if they were to go there, you need to develop your personality. Honestly, uh, uh, expand your characters. I just don't see it with the revival for their wrestling style. I think they're best suited, you know, for NWA, which you know I'm a big NWA fan, big NWA fan. But again, maybe NWA is able to hide that because it's more wrestling orientated for that crowd. I mean, AEW, uh, it's not that type of crowd for the Revival. I just I just don't see it with the Revival in AEW. You know, if that's where, in fact, they are thinking about going. I mean, it's all speculation. Who knows? But, again, character plays a huge part in this, too. It does. I hope all is well, guys. We're going to do a, a part two. So we're going to end this video now. We're going to continue with part two because there's still a lot of wrestling news and rumors that I wanted to get into. So I hope all is well. Check out the second video that's behind this one. Which is a continuation of this, I guess, so to speak. So until then, guys, ciao. See you in the next video.